uh, after receiving his card, I gave him a call, and uh, so I believe, you know, I invited him to come to our house for dinner after talking with him uh, for a few minutes, and uh, we kind of became friends afterwards, so a lot of uh, uh, times that he was off the work, he would come over our place or come to the property, and uh, we being kind of like-minded, both of us, we hit it off as far as, you know, becoming really good friends. Later on convinced me that uh, I should uh, start the winery because at the time I was thinking that I initially would uh, do all the planting and then years later to do the winery. But he convinced me that it's best that uh, as we were planting to have a small winery so people would notice what kind of wine we could produce in order to even be able to sell our fruit. And I believe it was uh, sometimes in 2001 that uh, because he was an uh, assistant winemaker at another winery and uh, he really would like to become the winemaker so we hired him as a, as a winemaker for us and uh, it took some time to build and finish the building and then in 2001 was the first vintage that uh, Jimmy made the wine for us. Jimmy was a really very uh, big character uh, just like uh, and, and he would really blend in and uh, uh, him going to Linfield College, we had another affiliation with him because of that and graduating from Linfield. He was just a really a likable guy and, uh, you know, of course he had a very complex uh, character, type A personality, but uh, we, we became really good friends and uh, it was really unfortunate that uh, in 2004, just weeks before harvest, uh, maybe a week or so before harvest, he passed away. Uh, that was a big blow t to me and my family. In 2004, uh, when he passed away, uh, within the industry, a lot of people that, uh, uh, they were kind of concerned because he was my winemaker and I myself uh, didn't have the knowledge of winemaking. My kids were really young. So a lot of people even, you know, volunteered to help us to make our wine. But uh, his assistant, Chris Williams, that worked here as well, was a really very knowledgeable uh, guy. And so we really didn't need anybody's help. Uh, so Chris made the wine in 2004, and he actually did an amazing job. Our 2004 was uh, a really great vintage for us. So he made the wine here both for Jimmy and us. I have no doubt that it, it, because the industry hasn't changed, people still have a sense of working together and uh, helping each other. So I, I'm, I'm sure if something like that happened to any of us, we all would pitch in and try to help another one. Of course, the industry those days was much, much smaller than what it is today. So it was easier to get together than compared to right now that there's several hundred wineries. But uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the pioneers and forefathers of the wine industry in Oregon have made it such that, uh, you know, if any of us is in need, uh, we would try to, to help each other. And we don't even think about it. I mean, it's just like, this is something uh, uh, that it comes naturally. Um, did you think um, Brooks Winery would still be around whenever, um, in 2017? 
I, I uh, visiting Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's sister, Janie, uh, you know, at, when we had the ceremony and all that, I had no doubt that she was really determined uh, to get it going, uh, to carry the torch and to leave something for Pascal. Uh, and uh, so I, I had no doubt that uh, she would be able to pull that off. Jimmy was a really fun guy to be around. He loved to cook, he loved to eat, and we shared a lot of stories. And uh, as I said, you know, it's just like we had the same kind of thought as far as how we wanted to grow things. And I had shared with him uh, some of the wine regions in the old country and how they did not only the farming, but also the winemaking. So we were all looking to find a better way of farming. And that's, uh, you know, discussing, uh, as I said earlier, uh, in the old country, we don't call it biodynamic. So I shared with him some of my experiences in northwest of Iran in a wine region that winemaking dates back for several thousand years and you know telling him about some uh, Assyrian friend that I had and going to that place and how much fun it was so you know he at the time of course he couldn't go to Iran because of the uh, turmoil between the two countries but he was able to go you know after hearing my stories uh, and, and you know to go to Georgia as an example and uh, uh, you know learning how they make the wine so he was a guy that uh, was really fun to be around and just loved to eat good food and consume a lot of drinks and uh, it was fun to be around him. Yeah. Jimmy just loved Pascal. He just really, uh, his life was devoted to Pascal. And, uh, and now looking back uh, Pascal being a five-year-old kid, I think at the time that Jimmy died, and you know, he's grown up to be a really uh, wonderful young man. And it's just like any time I look at Pascal, Jimmy's picture comes. Yeah, it's his his character, his his uh, demeanor. He that he just made friends instantly. Uh, within the industry, it's just like uh, it was, you know, so thrilling after his death, which we're all very sorry to see such a young man passing away. But what was uh, really rewarding to see that everybody, not just only in the wine industry, but the restauranters, the bartenders, and everybody really wanted to help. And uh, it, it was really, I've, I've not seen that in this country. It's just like his death uh, not only impacted us a great deal to lose such a good friend, but uh, just, just knowing and learning that how many people really knew him and they just wanted to do whatever they could to help the family and uh, help the kid. Uh, that, that, that's something I haven't seen uh, that much here in this country. Just he really uh, had the kind of personality that uh, after visiting him one time, you know, people would become really good friends with him.